decide for you to get married. If I don't stand here and I tell you, my father decided for me to get married, and he sold me when I was at the end of my 13, getting close to my 14, to a man, and in return he received $50. He received American dollar. And a worth of a month of opium use for his use. If I don't tell you this, you would most probably think child marriage or child bride is a cultural thing. No, it isn't. It's an Islamic thing. It is authorized by Allah and practiced by the perfect man, which is Muhammad. He had a wife who was six years old. Well, yes, he didn't consummate the marriage until she was nine. But because of that, and because in Quran Allah said, we sent you Muhammad the prophet, the perfect example of a man, so you do what he does to this day. A Muslim man can marry a little girl as young as an hour old and can consummate that marriage at age nine. I was close to my 14, but I can tell you, it doesn't matter. I could be nine, I could be five, I could be 14. The worst part of it is the feeling when you stare at your father. I know America. I know the beautiful culture here. I know a father would die for his daughter. But I had a father who handed me to this man to make Allah happy. Not only he didn't protect me, he put me purposely on harm's way. And if you think my father was the only man who decided to do that, no. In average, every single day, between five to seven little girls are being sold in Islamic countries. Every single day. Because there are so many people who want to believe that there's a heaven for them. And if they sell their little girls to a man, they will buy a spot for themselves there. I personally don't believe in that heaven. Technically, I'm not an ex-Muslim. By definition, they call me ex-Muslim because I was born in an Islamic country. In an Islamic country, you don't have a choice. When you're born, they will stamp your birth certificate as a Muslim. But when on that day at age nine, in that room, when the imam was done talking, they got us all up and said, say the shahada. Shahada is when you officially convert to Islam and you basically admit that there's no God but Allah and Muhammad is the only prophet. I didn't say it. There was too many people talking. Nobody noticed I'm not saying it. Because somewhere in my head, I knew there is no way God would tell my father or any other father to do this, to cause rape on their little girls so they can go to heaven. I was lucky. I was fortunate to somehow know this. I don't know how I knew it. But there are so many people who don't. There are so many Muslims that if you ask them if they read the Quran, they will say no. They haven't. They only read the parts their imam and leaders tell them to read. But I actually have read the Quran. By around five, age five, I had the Quran memorized. I had no idea what I was saying. I just had it memorized because my mom would drag me with her to all these classes where she started, you know, she would teach Quran. But then when I went to school, starting second grade, they say mandatory, you have to learn Arabic because you need to learn Quran because you need to say the prayer. I raised my hand and said, uh, quick question. So you're telling me Allah who created this is not bilingual? All he got is Arabic? 
I got three days suspension. Later on, I started reading the Quran for myself. I came to the first surah, which every Muslim, ask any of them, ask them if they do their prayer. They say yes. It's five times a day. The entire thing is 20 times. So they repeat the first surah of Quran 20 times. And the very last verse of this surah, forgive me, I'm just a messenger, refers to all Jews and Christians as the cursed people. So every Muslim, radical or not, extremist or not, lovely or not, moderate or not, 20 times a day calls everyone in this room people who were cursed by Allah. I think that was the first time I stood and I'm like, wait, what? So Allah says, I created everyone equally, but then decided to curse some of his creation. Question mark. Moving forward, 